Hello and welcome to this presentation on design patterns. In this episode, we'll be looking at the template method pattern. The template method pattern for me is one of the more enjoyable design patterns, probably for a few reasons. One is that it makes classical use of polymorphism, which most patterns do, but this is, I think, the sort of the classical use of it. And the other is that this pattern is uh, fairly frequently used in, in you know, most uh, systems, business systems, and and others. So in other words, you'd you'd find yourself using the system, uh, this design pattern, quite a bit. So let's look at the Goff definition of the design patterns book definition of the template method pattern. It says define the skeleton of an algorithm in an operation, deferring some steps to subclasses. So there's a few things here. One is the algorithm doesn't necessarily mean it's a mathematical or you know physics or statistical re related function. An algorithm could just be in, in this case or in this context, a business function that has a sequence of steps. And typically you do have sequence of steps for business functions. And so it's saying define the skeleton. In other words, just define the orchestration or the sequence of steps of an operation, differing some steps to subclasses, meaning allowing one or more of these steps to be overridden by descendants or subclasses. The template method pattern lets subclasses redefine certain steps of an algorithm without changing the algorithm structure. So that means subclasses can override these methods, but they don't get a shot at changing the sequence of steps, the structure of the algorithm. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos on polymorphism, I suggest you take a look at those videos because I do explain how polymorphism functions and what it really is. And I think that's important to not understanding just the template method pattern, but pretty much every other design pattern, since they almost every one of them <coughs> uses polymorphism to a great extent. And also in that video, I do allude to this pattern without giving it the name, without using the template method pattern name. And uh, the code we'll be looking at today is kind of, I'll start from scratch, but it's essentially the same code or similar to what we had in that video. So if you're feeling a little lost in this video, I suggest going back to the videos on polymorphism, understanding polymorphism parts one and two, just so that we got do spend a little more time on the foundational aspect of the the code base. Okay, so let's get started here with some code. Create a new project here. I'm going to create a console application, but um, we'll also have a library project. So this, I'm going to call this template method console application, and I'm going to call the solution let's call the solution template method pattern okay, and then once that's done also create a add a library project to this solution uh, let's call this library project uh, template method lib now the use case or the business case we have in this demo from a code point of view is a uh, the need to create thumbnails for different media types. In other words, we need a uh, family of objects that know how to create or extract thumbnails from different media types, audio, video, uh, and image files. So we have a base class here. Let's call this base class uh, media thumbnailer, thumbnailer base. This media thumbnail or base class will have one method, a public method that returns uh, an image that's called uh, um, what do we want to call this? We want to call this, um, and it takes in a what we call a media info is the class we'll define soon. So let's first get the references in here so it doesn't complain. The image comes from uh, system.drawing. So that takes care of that. The media info we need to define. It should be part of our library project. And this... Uh, 
We can call this class media info. So that's what the media info looks like. <coughs> it's just a class with various properties and a constructor that takes in all of those properties. Is it a uh, model or a DTO object? Close that file. Okay, let's look at the generate thumbnail method itself um, for this for the base class. So this is where we define the template method. Of course, the name doesn't have to be called template method, but it, the idea is that this is the method that is the template, and it's a public method for all intents and purposes. Uh, the users of the or consumers of this uh, class just have access to this method typically, but internally it it does a sequence of steps or orchestration as I like to call it. Let's say the first step it needs to do is uh, validate media info, giving it the media info. This step needs to validate the media info. Now we could say that the validation of media info itself, which is this DTO, is probably common in, in all in all the across the classes, meaning it's not pertinent on or dependent upon whether this media is a video or uh, image or, or um, audio file because it's just media info, it's just information about the media and the way we would need to validate that would be I guess common across the various descendants. So we could say this method may be implemented uh, in this method. But let's defer that decision making for later. Let me do the orchestration itself. The next step uh, in the sequence of steps would be uh, to ensure that the MIME type is supported which basically says again in media info we have uh, mime type. You know our system might grow over time, but right at this moment in time, maybe you only support certain mime types for images, certain mime types for videos, and so on. But we want to make sure that whatever that came in in our media info is something we do support at this moment in time. So we have to ensure that mime type is supported. Now one could argue that this specific method might be need to be implemented by the descendants because we you know the video media thumbnailer might know that it supports these mime types for videos and so on uh, so that's again one of those things that we need to look at the next would be to um, extract metadata given the given the uh, media info again now the extract metadata might probably come back to us with a uh, media metadata type uh, metadata media metadata which we need to define this media metadata type so let's also define that class metadata and this class would also just have a bunch of bunch of properties that we would uh, need to have. It's not something s uh, specific, but it's for for demo purposes, I'm just going to use these methods here, these properties. So the media metadata has width, height, media type, uh, codec, bitrate, etc. Nothing really to to look at. It's just another class that holds some data, and the media type in this case is also another. It's an enum of you know audio, video, image, etc. So let's go define the media type uh, enum as well. It's not a class; it's an enum, and it has um, audio, image, uh, video. Three options. All right, so the extract metadata method probably is very specific to the type of media because each media type, the way you extract met metadata from a specific media file, meaning audio, video, or image, is very specialized. And so we could say this is certainly one of those methods that needs to be implemented by the actual descendant. And once we have the metadata, we can now go ahead and, and uh, generate the, the thumbnail. I'll call this uh, extract ext extract thumbnail
which takes in the probably the media info as well as the media metadata as the two inputs and it will return the image that we need to turn from here so here's the template method pattern now let's say I'm going to say this the um, um, validate media info is probably implemented in this class now we could make this private um, or we can make it protected meaning and on virtual so that we could give the descendants an opportunity to change the way, way they validate this but for now I just leave it here I'm just going to say um, same thing like we did in the other class I'm going to call so we can track this as to what method was actually called here so in the thumbnail base we call media validate info uh, ensure media type is supported let's say also is one of those method steps that we can implement in the base class we could say this is protected virtual in case descendants need to override it but the base class does have a basic implementation so we could have that scenario here and in this case uh, it's doing calling this method and of course the assumption here is that both of these would throw exceptions if uh, something is wrong meaning if the media info is not valid it'll throw an exception with the right information if the mime type is not supported it'll throw an exception and that's one of the ways you, you want to write code as well. You don't want to have codes with if, else, and return values, and checking to see if the values, you know, good or not. In other words, you could have a bool returning value. So, okay, if media is valid, then do if, you know, mime tab is supported, then if, and so on. That complicates the your structure of your code. It's easier to just write a sequence of steps and assume that if you've gotten to this method here, if the execution has reached this method, then everything before it was okay. And that's just a cleaner way to, to write your code. Okay, then we come to extract metadata. And this, we could say that probably needs to be abstract. So the the extract metadata is certainly one of those uh, methods that we can't implement in this base class. And so we'll leave it as abstract. And the same to do with the extract thumbnail. It'll also have to be protected, abstract and uh, is not implemented thus in the base class so we have a s various combinations we've got four methods of which one is private and descendants don't get an opportunity to override the other is protected and virtual but it's implemented here so in other words even though the base class does have some implementation descendants could choose to override that implementation and then two methods where the descendants will be forced to implement these let's define some of the descendant classes here we'll have um, a media thumbnailer uh, audio that descends from media thumbnailer base and of course we'll need to override uh, oh need to make this class abstract And so this guy can implement these two methods. Now in this case, let's say it's just going to implement these two methods. <coughs> it won't override the one other method it has an option to do. Uh, and it's in this implementation, the extract thumbnail and extract metadata. Okay, the extract metadata, of course, we'll implement in a certain way. The extract thumbnail, we're just going to have a... Rather than extracting the thumbnail, like we did in the polymorphism episode, rather than extracting a thumbnail from the media we're just going to generate an image in this class that's specific to this class such that you we can by looking at the image we can tell that the behavior has changed meaning it was the thumbnail or audio that generated the image or thumbnail or video generated the image and so on so we you know we discuss all this in the other polymorphism as well so, so there's a method in the base class that we need to implement here it's basically the, the method that generates the image but it's a common um, method so I'm just going to implement it here in the base class and we call it create image It's protected so that descendants can can get access to it and it creates an image of course the descendants will call this method passing in the different information so that each image looks slightly different different for each of them but the basic generation of the image is in the in the descendant so now from my 
extract thumbnail I'm going to call this method for the audio so create image in the case of an audio the image is um, typically mp3 files I have 300 by 300 pixel images let's say in this case the background color we want for the image is uh, dark dark red and the foreground would be uh, let's say white because we're going to write some text on it so we should be able to we need to be able to read the text um, no text here I guess maybe I missed I forgot the, the text part oh sorry that's in the descent so the text here we could say I am an audio file and so what's going to happen is and this is going to return the image we just return this out of here and the extraction of metadata because since we're not actually using it anywhere we could just say it's we could just return null for now for test purposes so let's say for now we just return null in the real world this would use the media information and get at the actual physical file and extract metadata based on that media type in this case the audio thumbnail so I'm going to do the same thing now for the various other descendants so we will create a, another class define another class here for media thumbnail or video media thumbnail or image and pretty much do the same thing with slight differences in this method here so we get different behavior because each descendant is implementing their method differently right so let's do that media thumbnailer uh, image that also descends from media thumbnailer base implements this and this will also do the similar implementation create image this is a image typically images are four to three aspect so that'll be 400 by 300 uh, color I just change this here color dot uh, say dark green and foreground color again we need to read that so I'll just make it white again and the text here would be I am an image file no implementation for the extract metadata method so that will be just returning a null for now and then we'll we'll create uh, another file another class here let's call this um, media uh, thumbnail or video new class file created new class definition here also descends from media thumbnail or base so you get the picture there's three different descendants they each have slightly different implementations for this one method the actual extract thumbnail method and that way when we use these classes polymorphically in our systems we'll be able to tell the difference between uh, each of the images uh, but tell the difference by just looking at the images and seeing the output so I'm a video file and return null for now so let's revise what we have here um, in our base class what we have is the template method pattern the template method sorry so this method the generate thumbnail is the template method the class is of course employing the template method design pattern and it's we have the sequence of steps or the algorithm and step one is validate media info step two is ensure type is supported media type uh, mime type is supported step three is extract the metadata step four is extract the thumbnail and in this our design here we've decided that these two methods the extract thumbnail and the extract metadata would be abstract so descendants will be forced to override that or these two methods the ensure mime type is supported is implemented in the descendant but the descendant does allow sorry is implemented in the base 
but the base allows descendants to override if required by marking this method as virtual and also giving them access to this method so it's protected virtual while the media validate media info in this case the base class has decided that it can handle the ma validating by itself and doesn't need to give descendants, dis descendants the opportunity to override so this is just a private method and not protected virtual the base class also implements the create image uh, method that we all of our descendants are really using it's doing all of the heavy lifting of creating an actual bitmap image uh, and making sure all the disposable objects are disposed okay so that's that now in order to use this um, these classes there's a few ways we could do this of course we need to reference the the library project in our console application so let's do that so I'm <coughs> uh, overriding sorry referencing the template method lib pattern and as you if you remember from the previous episode on polymorphism we like to use some sort of factory that allows us to make use of these classes or family of classes in a poly polymorphic fashion such that our code doesn't change um, the decision making as to which instance to instantiate is not is not handled by the client code if you will but it's handled by the by the factory so but just to see how these things work I'm going to define a um, actually I won't do that because the thumbnail base is the only public <coughs> class here the the descendants are not public they're in internal let me just mark them all internal as well like from a design point of view I want to leave them uh, internal so now we're going to define the media thumbnail or factory class in our library project media thumbnail or factory and this class um, if you remember from our previous uh, episode on polymorphism this class is going to be static like the other one and I just copy paste it from the previous project media thumbnail or base uh, okay so what this factory is doing the thumbnail or factory is is depending on the mime types it will create an instance of the specific descendant meaning if the mime type happens to be something to do with images it'll create an instance of the thumbnail or image if the mime type has something to do with audio it'll create an instance of mime type uh, so the audio thumbnailer and if, if the mind type has to be something to do with videos it's going to create the video thumbnailer so that's the factory which means I can now use this factory in our in our console application so here I could say media thumbnailer factory dot create me the thumbnailer based on a mime type right so I could say audio mp3 of course it has to be a supported mime type okay, we're not doing that validation even though we have a method in our thumbnail base that says ensure mime type is supported we're not actually implementing that uh, at this point here but we know that will happen at some point if you were to generate a thumbnail giving it a media info that has a mime type that we don't support it'll blow out uh, so once we have this thumbnailer we could then call the generate thumbnail method on this giving it the media info so let's define a media info here typically this media info would be created from uh, an, a file that's been uploaded to your system by an end user I'm just gonna call this some um, file name the mime type in this case we'll make it as uh, audio mp3 and fast stream we can keep it as null since we're not actually referencing this anywhere in this in this project and rather than 
repeating this here I'll use the media infos mime type property just to make sure we're on the same page here and then I can send in the media info to the generate thumbnail and this returns of course uh, an image as we know and images are disposable um, so let's add, wrap this in a using oh, what happened okay so if you run this application now it's um, we need the reference to a system or drawing in our console application as well and that'll be system dot drawing okay so if this is an audio file we expect an audio file we can't see the color here but we can see that the audio image that's generated well not the audio image but the image that's generated by the thumbnailer in this case will be a 300 by 300 image so let's run this application and see what, what we get here okay so first let's look at the the sequence of steps here so notice that the first two methods are being called from the base class the next two methods are being called from the in this case the audio thumbnail class because we are mime type is a is the audio mime type and the sequence of steps is these four methods validate media info ensure mime type is supported extract metadata and extract thumbnail now if you were to change this um, or the other thing we could we could uh, see here is that the image has in this case because it's audio it has dimensions of 300 by 300 now if you were to change this uh, let me run this through let's say we change this to a video mp4 what we should see now is the sequence of steps again in this case they have changed and the steps are not changed of course but the the class being used here now for the last two methods is the video thumbnailer but the sequence of steps is exactly the same but the behavior will be different as we will see in a second where the images dimensions are not 300 by 300 anymore but they are 480 by 270 which is the dimensions for our uh, the of the image that the video thumbnailer is producing so if you look at our um, definition here define the skeleton of an algorithm in an operation which we did which is the generate thumbnail method and the sequence of steps in there deferring some steps to subclasses so some steps were deferred to some classes uh, in some cases the entire method was deferred meaning they, they were abstract and in, in one of the methods was made implemented in the base class but made virtual <coughs> so that descendants may override it if they so choose to and the template method pattern lets subclasses redefine certain steps of an algorithm without changing the algorithm structure so as if you can look in our method implementations here so the descendants they each implement the method but they don't control the sequence they don't get a shot at changing the sequence of steps in fact they don't even have an idea of the sequence of steps they don't know there's a sequence of steps they're just looking at these two methods and implementing them as per their choosing here okay we have i'm just going to reiterate there's a base class that has the template method which is the sequence of steps where some methods have been deferred to descendants some methods have been implemented in the base class but the base class is still giving the opportunity to do descendants to override and some methods are purely implemented in the base class and descendants don't get the opportunity to override either but that's all dependent on your use case you know you may have you know 10 methods you might have three methods maybe all of them are abstract maybe one of them is abstract so that's all based on your use case uh, we have three descendants the thumbnailer audio the thumbnailer image and the thumbnailer video each has their slightly different implementations typically in our case here is just the dimensions of the image and the colors and the text that we see in this uh, image maybe for the sake of completeness i should create a gui application as well for those of you who have not seen the polymorphism video 
so let's go ahead and recreate uh, create a new uh, winforms application so we can see the images so create a winforms application in here and in this application we'll have a drop down we'll have a button so the drop down will allow us to pick and choose the different MIME types uh, okay, we're kind of faking it, but we're saying based on the user yeah, uploaded information, image, sorry, file, we could determine whether that file is audio, video, or, or image, and then based on that, we generate the thumbnail. So we're just going to use the drop down here for the different mind types, even though in reality we'd be uploading a, an actual image, sorry, an actual file somewhere, a media file. And we do that. I've also gone ahead and just implemented some some code here to fill up the drop down with a specific um, let me zoom in here just some plumbing to uh, display some items in the drop down namely we want to be able to see audio image and video and based on what the selection is we should be able to extract the the mime type there and then here we need access to the thumbnail or factory and the thumbnail or base. So let me add a reference to this Windows WinForms application to our library project. The lib. And now we should be able to say um, media th media thumbnailer factory dot create thumbnailer and this takes in a mime type we'll also need the so the media info so let's create that media info in fact we can just copy it from the program since it's going to be the the same but this um, the mime type here we'll pick from the drop down so mime type is really the uh, comma box com the selected item is really going to be an instance of uh, this type so I'm just going to cast that and then this type has property we're interested in which is the oops the, this the mime type and then this mime type you can put in here as a parameter so we have our media info the thumbnail factory just takes the mime type so we'll give it the media info's mime type and that returns to us a thumbnailer and this time the image that we get back will be assigned to our picture box one dot image this is going to do thumbnailer dot generate thumbnail giving it the media info okay so this is going to give us the visual representation let me also make our the GUI application the startup project okay and we run it what we're going to see here I'm going to pick uh, audio and I see a red file that says I'm an audio file and our audio file is 300 by 300 so this is a square image the image file is a green file it's got a 400 by 300 aspect ratio or size dimensions here and it says I am an image file and then the video um, is oops didn't change the color should probably change the color um it says i'm a video file but it's a uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio that's uh, 470 480 by 270. let me just go change the color for the thumbnailer so this should be let's say dark blue run it again and this time 
I'm just gonna cycle through them quickly. So we have audio, image, and video. So same thing, behavioral change, but we're using the template method pattern here in this case. And the template method pattern defines a sequence or orchestration of uh, steps for a certain function and then descendants have the ability to override one or more of those methods to get different behavior. So that concludes um, for the second time that concludes the this discussion on the template method pattern. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I was uh, I did justice in trying to explain the template method, method pattern and I'll see you guys next time.